guys here in Cleveland, Ohio at the one and only Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with Jason Hanley. Jason, uh, welcome back to the show. We have here a, a great flying V. Now, this is not a Gibson. This is a... That's right. It's not a Gibson flying right. V. It's right. a little bit of a uh, mixed up guitar um, with a flying V body, but a different neck added on. And this is a really great instrument that was played by Randy Rhodes and originally put together by Carl Sandoval in 1979. Wow, wow. look at that. And, you know, this has become the instrument that is the kind of iconic image of Randy Rhodes right. playing guitar, right? I mean, if you look at the Ozzy Osbourne, Randy Rhodes tribute album cover, right, which a lot of players will remember, all those great live cuts, uh, this is the guitar Randy's playing on that cover. So. Amazing. Was he using this during the Quiet Riot days? Yeah, well? that's right. So Randy yeah. Rhodes, of course, comes from Quiet Riot right, in right. the L.A. scene, the kind of hair metal bands coming out right. of there. And again, this kind of look and style of the uh, white polka dot on the black guitar kind of becomes a little bit of that. And uh, this exact combo here, we've got an outfit that Randy would have worn on stage, too. Uh, he originally played this guitar and wore that outfit with Quiet Riot, but when Ozzy Osbourne steals him away to come play in the Blizzard of Oz band, uh, we get Randy still playing this instrument. That's amazing. And it's a great, there's some really cool details about this too that I like. I mean, I've always had heard about before I saw the guitar here that he had the kind of bow tie um, oh inlay on the instrument because, yeah. you know, that became very famous. But if you look really close, you can see the added inlay that Sandoval did is actually only the kind of outside of the bow tie. The dots are the actual dots from the original neck oh, look that was that. put on here. Look at that. So it's not a completely new inlay. It was just actually expanding what was there already. That's very clever. Right? Isn't that pretty cool? It very brings a great cool. new design to the instrument without having to change too much of what was there. Very, very you cool. Yeah, the other famous story is that supposedly very early on after Randy got this instrument, he broke the headstock off the top of it there. Um, but Sandoval actually redid the instrument and repainted it and put it all back together for him. So uh, there are a lot of famous stories about the instrument going out of tune because of that. But if you've ever seen Randy Woods playing this live, it didn't seem to go out of tune that much for the way he really uh, put the instrument to the test. Uh, amazing. Well, that is a great, great axe. Yeah, just a beautiful guitar. And again, one of those instruments that instantly when visitors come into the museum here and see it, uh, if you were a fan of that 80s hair metal, you're going to know this instrument right away. And many people come up here and are really moved by seeing something like this in the exhibit. And, you know, when we say treasures from the vault, this really, again, is one of those treasured instruments. Because, of course, Jackson goes on to make uh, a bunch of Flying V-style guitars later on that Randy Rhodes even used and played. But this one's that original instrument that he had when he first started playing that Flying V-style. Amazing. You know, for our viewers around the world, guys, if you haven't been to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here in Cleveland, it is so well worth the visit. I mean, Absolutely. this is just one kind of uh, iconic yeah. uh, reference point to a whole era in rock and it, the, the, the information and the the, uh, the stories that uh, and the, the icons they have here at, at, at the Hall of Fame are just amazingly deep. Yeah, and that's one of the things we really try and do here at the museum too, is not just showcase some great instruments, but give uh, people who come in here, whether they're fans or just people who have some interest, to give them the history of the music. Right. So that they're getting a sense of why this would be important, right. why an instrument like this, it's more than just this instrument. It's that whole history of the music and how it changed different points in history and where it went to.